An object that moves under the influence of the gravitational force only. That is the definition of projectile. If you omit the word object in your definition, you lose the mark. And after gravitational force, if you omit the word only, you lose another mark. So we have to be very precise with our definitions. That is the answer to 3.1. Let's look at our question statement and try answering 3.2. So a 50 grams ball is dropped from a certain height. The velocity time graph below represents the motion of the ball as it bounces vertically on a concrete floor. The time of contract during the bounce is 0.02 seconds. Ignore all effects of a friction. And then 3.2, the question says that, let's write down the magnitude of the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground after bouncing. So let's look at our graph. Our ball is dropped from a certain height with this velocity right here, which is equals to zero. And then when it strikes the ground, it is striking the ground at 3.92 meters per second. And then it spends 0.02 seconds in contact with the ground and leaves the ground with a velocity of 3.43 meters per second upwards. So the answer to 3.2, we're looking for the magnitude of the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground after bouncing. That should be 3.43 meters per second. And 3.3. Draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the ball at 0 0.77 seconds. So let's go to 0 0.7 seconds and see what is happening. So at 0 0.77 seconds, our velocity is equals to 0. We know that we are at a maximum height. But apart from the velocity being equals to 0, there is nothing special about maximum height gravitational force is still acting on the object it is still 9.8 meters per second squared downwards so our free body diagram should look something like this we have f g right and that is all that we are required to do for 33 now let's move to 3.4 and look at 3.4.1. Use the information given on the graph and calculate the acceleration of the ball. So 3.4.1, we're looking for the acceleration of the ball. There's two ways we can use to answer this question. We can use equations of motion because we have vi, we have vf, and we have delta t. Another way we can use, we can find the gradient of our graph. The gradient of the VT graph will give you acceleration. And then the area will give you the displacement. So if we use uh, equations of motion, our VI is equals to 0 meters per second. Because our ball is dropped. And VF is equals to 3.92 meters per second. Uh, the velocity at which we strike the ground. Then the acceleration is what we're interested in. And the time for that motion is 0 0.4. So if we use equations of motion, we're going to have Vf being equals to Vi plus A delta T. We say that Vf is 3.92 and Vi it's zero because it is dropped, right? Plus A multiplied by 0 0.4. It's easy to see now that A is just equals to 3.92 divided by 0 0.4. Of which, if you put in your calculator, you're going to get 9.8 meters per second squared. So that is our acceleration using equations of motion. If we decide to use the gradient, we can take this first point here. We can take this point and this point and find the gradient between the two points, of which we're going to get y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. 
y2 that is 3.92 and y1 is 0 x2 that is 0 0.4 and x1 is 0 again you can see that we're going to get 9.8 meters per second squared regardless of which technique we decide to use 3.4.2 uh, the question is saying that uh, let's calculate the height from which the ball was dropped. Again, two ways of answering the question. Equations of motion or the area under the graph. For the position or for the displacement, we need the area under the graph. So also to find the height, we're going to use the area under the graph. For the acceleration, we use the gradient of the VT. So you need to know which to use when. We don't just calculate the gradient all the time right so if we use the area under the graph we're gonna have area being equals to half base multiplied by height so the area which we're interested in let me just erase this the area which we're interested in is this very area here is this area we have here so if we decide to use that area our base it's 0 0.4 so we have a base of 0 0.4 and our height is 3.92 our height is 3.92 the height of our triangle is 3.92 and then if you punch that in your calculator you should get an area of 0 0.784 so our answer here will be 0 0.784 meters that is the height from which our ball was dropped light work uh, obviously you can use equations of motions again uh, to answer these questions there's multiple ways of solving this one i think there's probably five ways you can use to answer this question uh, the next question 3.5 on the same set of axes, draw a position time graph for the motion of the ball from 0 second to 1.12 second. Use the ground as zero reference, indicate the height from which the ball was dropped and all the relevant times on the t-axis of your graph. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and try that. What do we need? We need our set of axes. We need a set of axes so our y and our x our y and our x we are good to go now we can say that this is y in meters and this is time in seconds so our maximum height where our ball was dropped that is 0 0.784 and we strike the ground after 0 0.4 second we in contact with the ground for 0 0.02 so we leave the ground at 0 0.042 seconds so let's just plot that first before uh, we carry on so if we connect those two we should have something like this we should have something like this and then our ball will leave the ground obviously it reaches another maximum height we can see that from the, our velocity time graph right it reaches another maximum height and then it goes down to strike the ground again so there at the maximum height we have a time which is 0 0.77 seconds here it is here it is right here and then the entire time for the motion it's 1.12 seconds and i think we get to go i think we've indicated all that we needed to indicate let's look at 3.6 give one term for the rate of change of momentum one term for the rate of change of momentum what's happening here so the rate of change of momentum delta p divided by delta t we know fully well that this is equals to f net so the one term which we should give is net force net force right if not f net force then at least resultant force yeah there isn't anything else we can say there 3.7 calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the flow on the ball for the time of contract so let's go to a graph and and look at that look at that 
yeah let's just erase this so we're interested on only this part this part of our motion we're looking for the force that the flow exert on the ball but let's just sketch or draw the free body diagram of the ball while it is in contact with the floor so that we can have a bit of clarity so if we do that we're gonna have fg obviously as always and then the floor is gonna push in is gonna be pushing the ball upwards so this will be the force exerted by the floor so that's what we have then that is our free body diagram so we can say that f net is equals to f exerted by the floor minus f g because they are in the opposite direction so if we calculate f net and we find another way of completing fg then we essentially have the force that is exerted by the flow how can we find f net we know that uh, f net is equals to the change in p divided by the change in t so at 0 0.4 we start with a velocity of 3.92 and at 0 0.42 when we leave the ground we have a velocity of 3.43 now it is important to note that it is 3.92 downwards and then it is 3.43 upwards so that will be essential when we choose which direction we take it as positive and which direction we take it as negative and obviously our change in time is 0 0.02 second so that seems like we have f net covered we know that the mass is equals to 50 grams 50 grams so we have f net covered uh, fg we also have it covered because you know that fg is our outermost simple case right so fg the mass is 50 grams and the gravitational acceleration due to the earth is 9.8 meters per second squared downwards right that direction is going to come in handy when we substitute so which direction do we, not, do we want to take as positive let's take up as positive so take up as positive take up as positive it is just common sense so in place of f net uh, let me just write our equation down again so f net is equals to the force applied by the flow minus fg so in place of f net we can put uh, the rate of change in momentum right so the mass will be 50 divided by a thousand multiplied by vf which is 3.43 upwards minus vi which is 3.92 downwards so if it is downwards we should substitute it with a minus sign if we take it up as positive so we're gonna have minus 3.92 we close that bracket and we divide everything by 0 0.02 and then this will be equals to the force that is exerted by the flow minus fg so what is our mess our mess again we have 50 divided by 1000 multiply by 9,8 so that is 9,8 downwards so it will actually be minus 9,8 well we have already indicated that fg is going downwards by this minus sign right here so our 9,8 it actually doesn't need that negative sign because if it has that negative sign then we have the force exerted by the flow plus the force exerted by gravity because that minus and that minus will give you a positive so that 9,8 is actually supposed to be positive so we have 9.8 here and now what you are left with is taking this term to the left hand side and if we do that we're gonna get the force exerted by the flow being equals to so now let's just drag and drop for the sake of time so we duplicate that and then we're gonna have plus 50 divided by a thousand multiplied by 9,8 and that should give us 18.865 newtons right 
3.8. In 3.8, the question is saying, if a softer ball is used and the time of contact with the floor is increased while the change in momentum remains constant, how will it influence the force on the ball? Right, only increase, decrease, or remain the same. It is going to decrease. So the answer here is decreases. Why am I saying that? We have already deduced that F net is equal to the change in momentum divided by the change in time. So we're keeping the change in momentum constant. We're saying that it is the same. If we increase the change in time, F net would decrease. Why are we saying so? F net is inversely proportional to the time of contact.